How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week six. Uh, we're four and one. Tough game in front of us today as we will go on the road to play number 24, Texas A&M. They're two and one. They're favored to win this one. They are like a 99 overall team, uh, which, you know, typically we don't do terrible against teams that are super good. Our defense is ranked higher. They haven't had a great season with turnovers so far alongside us. Um, lost to Kentucky. Beats a bad South Carolina in overtime. Struggled to beat uh, Arkansas. So I like our odds right now. But obviously, you know, we just have to play well. We have to avoid the turnovers. And if we do that, we could probably be uh, at least in every game. Maybe not winning, but... Hoping for the best there. Let's go straight into our recruiting today. We've got 1,100 points that we can give out. And I think we have some interesting stuff going on. Andre Atkins is going to be tough. 2,500 behind Kentucky. And he's like super locked. 96% locked. We don't have a visit coming up, but we are slowly gaining. So if we can get a visit, if we can hold on for a week, maybe we can jump up in there. I'm going to continue to give him points because he's insane. 98 speed, 95 acceleration, and he can play, I mean, 88 zone. This dude would be a monster corner, uh, 85 man as well. So we'll try to hold on to Andre as much as we can. Uh, and then down below him, Mike Shelby, 80 overall corner. We're 1,500 behind and locked out from Tamu, but they just had their visit. So if we unlock him, our visit's week 12, 645 behind, give him 700 points. And then when our visit comes, we're going to be in a great spot. Uh, I really do think that we have a great chance to get Mike Shelby. So we'll hope for the best there. Still gaining with Aaron Jenkins, the athlete. Kyle Edwards, we're losing 40 a week. We can give him 25 more. Big battle with South Carolina. This one could go to the offseason. It most likely will. Uh, he's a guy that we're going to want to go in pretty hard for, I think. Logan Smith, another strong safety. Slowly gaining. So we won't give or take points from him. Anthony Moore is an interesting one. We just had our visit. We're up 1,400 on both Mizzou and Washington, and they have to stay within 1,516 points to not get locked out. They have their visits, but it's not for a couple weeks, so we're going to give him the full 700 points in hope that we can get him committed soon uh, before they have their visits. I don't feel super confident, but I'm going to hope for the best there. And then, you know, we, we move down into guys that, you know, we'll probably take a few of these guys off the board. Down 3,300 to uh, Brandon Washington. Great strong safety, but it looks like he's going to stay in the o state of Ohio, either Toledo or Cincinnati. Or, I mean, look, below us, Ohio, Bowling Green, Ohio State. So, he, uh, I'm assuming uh, proximity to home, yeah, top priority there. So, Brandon Washington going to stay uh, in the home state. We'll take him off the board. And, you know, I, I feel confident with a lot of stuff. I mean, Ole Miss gained 880, but they had their visit, so I'm not super worried about losing out on Ben Cooper yet. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that we just can't afford to give points to yet, but still gaining on North Carolina there. Looks like we're doing okay with Billy Gray against Vanderbilt. So, uh, I'll look through. We do have a couple guys to scout. We'll do that real quick. Unless we take them off the board. Down 585 is fine. Down 560, down 3000. So, Tom Ross will come off, but Mario Smith and Kevin Barnes. The outside linebackers, uh, how well are they going to scout? 75 overall, up to a 78. I like that a lot from Mario. And for Kevin, it's going to go up to a 74. Okay, a couple of very, very solid outside linebackers there. Uh, and we're like right in the mix with both of these. So let's go ahead. We'll offer them scholarships this week and we'll offer a bunch of scholarships this week. Uh, and then just hope for the best. And that'll be the remainder of our points. Actually, we only have 25 left. So we'll go ahead and uh, give Mario the remaining points for his first scholarship offer. Who knows? Maybe we're able to jump up and steal uh, a pretty solid linebacker. This Texas A&M team right now with the number one class in the country. Eight guys signed already. That's pretty rough in week six. Oh, I wish that we uh, had that insta commit. Just the opportunity to pick these guys up. They are 99 overall, so... Not going to be an easy game for us. One that we kind of desperately need to win on the road. And I imagine they'll have some visits coming. Take a quick look. Our top 25. We had a lot of upsets for crazy games last week. This week we have some coming up. Number 2 and 3 in Texas and Oklahoma will play. Number 7 and 23 in Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, anything else? 19 Purdue, 17 Ohio State. So 
couple of uh, games coming up and well, we're just barely or not receiving votes at all. That's right. We like dropped in the rankings in the coaches polls. Uh, in the media poll, we are at 27. So a win here, I kind of expect us to be ranked at least in one poll. Uh, we just got to make sure that we get through the game with a win. So let's just hop on the plane and head to Texas where we can take these guys on. Uh, let's just go with our standard ways for this one. It's been a while since we've done that. And how about Texas A&M? What, uh, what are they rocking? I like how they call it a throwback when it's the 2018 version. Uh, only a couple of years passed and uh, only the maroon helmet. The maroon, the white, and the throwback jersey. The maroon pants. I guess we're just going to have uh, Texas A&M wearing their homes while we're wearing our ways. Kind of a standard game for us uniform-wise. So Texas A&M with a top 10 offense, we're going to say, but a bottom uh, 100 defense. They can stop the run, it looks like, but everything else is just easy. Uh, we're kind of the opposite. Very good defense so far. Not a very good offense. Their top players, I imagine, are great. Yeah, 94, 94, 93. Nothing incredible, honestly. Um, not much better than us, but that just means they have more depth. And I'm sure their quarterback is going to crush us. Hot streaks for our top three players. We go 93, 92, 91. And they have an injury to a cornerback out with a broken tailbone for another month. And an outside linebacker out with a strained quadricep for another week. So... Good news for our offense and that two of their, I'm assuming starters, I'm hoping starters are out, but uh, I mean, that's going to take away from their defense's capabilities. So we're back here at Kyle Field, back in the great state of Texas. I think that this is pre-renovation, uh, unfortunately, and we'll see what we can do going with tails to start this one off. We will lose, so I expect us to start with the ball, and uh, we will get it for a mile an hour crosswind today. And let's see what Jackson can do to open this game up. A big stage for this Coastal team. Can they step up and play special teams with a great start? We're going to have good field position on the drive. No penalties on the play. So Grayson gets to come out and lead this offense. Hopefully down the field for a touchdown to open things up. Going to come out and run on first down up the middle. This is where their defense has done well all season so far. So if we can beat them with our running game, I think that we have a pretty solid job or, you know, a, a good chance on offense. On the other side of the coin, though, their uh, passing defense hasn't been great all season. And we should have DJ Johnson open. He breaks a tackle. And look at that. We're almost to the 35-yard line in two plays. Maybe their defense just isn't good, especially with the two injuries. Uh, I don't know. If we can move the ball this well all game, I'll be pretty happy. Another first down. We're going to try to hand this one off again. Run in the zone. CJ gets forward. Three yards. I, I'm fine with this. Three and a half yards per carry so far. If he's consistent with that, we'll have a good time. Then we're going to continue to just kind of switch it up and bring these uh, play actions. Grayson, all the time in the world. Tough throw here. Logan Malden going to come down with that. Oh, I wanted to throw it to him earlier, but I'm glad it worked out as well as it did. And we're inside the red zone in, what, four plays? So fantastic news for us. We're going to go with the fake sweep now. Maybe they've done their homework and saw Bedgood's incredible fly sweep. The uh, last game that almost went for a touchdown, but instead we hand it off up the middle. Seven yards there inside the 10 for a second and three. And if the offense wants to continue to be this productive, I'm all for it. Looking for the touchdown now as we are just getting, I think, to the five yard line. It is third down. Need to convert this. Grayson, five wide on this play, looking to throw. A is open. It's going to be Dion Fountain for the first and goal. Took a hard shot from the safety, but held on and moved the chains for us. So we've learned from the best, and we know a fullback dive is the best opportunity here. So J.J. Barr is going to get it, and the sophomore gets forward for a yard. Not quite into the end zone. That was a questionable spot from the refs. And now... Texas A&M really lines up over the center. They know we're going to do it. Another fullback dive, second and goal. This time, JJ gets in, and just like that, honestly, a pretty easy drive compared to what I'm used to seeing for our offense on the first time out, and we score the touchdown, and we take the seven-point lead as Oklahoma has lost to Texas. The Longhorns start the season 4-0, and that might put them into the number one spot in the country. So a massive game there, and kind of interesting seeing Texas win. We'll see. Can they keep it up for the rest of the season? And we'll also see if our special teams and defense can get it done in this game. Looking to get ranked again. 
This is going to come down to the defense, I think. So the Aggies' uh, offense hasn't been doing great in the three games they've played so far this season. They're going to run this one. No, it's a play action. Oh, wide open. Man. Oh, no. Broken tackle. Braylon Smith goes 33 yards. That's not what I like to see. It's going to be a hurry up from Texas A&M out of the gates. I don't like that one bit. Blocking is great towards the edge. This could be a two-play touchdown. Nobody's going to catch him. Oh, my goodness. Leave it to our defense to make any offense look incredible. Two plays. Texas A&M scores again and uh, ties this one up. Uh, That's pretty rough. All right. Well, Jackson gets another chance to return on this one. Hoping for the best. Hope that the special teams does well. Jackson muffs it in the end zone. Picks it up. And is off to the races once again as he crosses the 30 and gives us, you know, decent field position after almost costing us big there. One thing for sure, I don't want to get suckered into going away from our offense. I think that can be a problem for us sometimes as the other team scores quick and I think we need to do the same. We're just going to come out and try to run and even if it takes a lot of time, we got to get it done. As we add on to that, of course, their defense could be getting tired as... Uh, our defense isn't going to, you know, see the field a whole lot, it seems, at least not in this first quarter. Only two yards on that counter. It's third and long. This is going to be a big-time play for Grayson to try to get this one done. Oh, wise wide open. Jackson was open. Grayson missed him. Mm, and apparently I went hurry up. Uh, we're not going to go for this, so I think that we take the, uh, the delay a game and get out of here alive. Actually, you know what? Big time game, big time play. We're going for it. Fourth and eight could be a huge mistake as we get outside the pocket and we'll scramble for it. Grayson has the space and oh my gosh. Worried me a little bit, but he picks it up and we stay alive on the drive. So we're going to be able to just continue to run. The fans here at Kyle Stadium got real quiet after that one. We might get loud after that hit though. CJ Beasley took a shot while picking up a yard. Grayson now really starting to heat up. Only player on the offense so far. I would love to see the offensive line get there. Beasley as well. Nice little spin move made a man miss, but didn't get a whole lot of extra yards out of the move. And on this third down, we will hand the ball off. Looking for it on the ground. CJ's got it. Or no, it's Brayden Bennett coming in. And he'll get his first carry for eight yards and another first down. Marquise Jackson will be getting the handoff here. Nearing the end of the first quarter on the jet sweep. He's got the speed. The spin move makes a man miss. And Marquise breaks a tackle and gets across the 15 into the red zone. Oh, man, those fly sleeps are working really well for us. But how about the dodge of the linebacker in the backfield to keep the play alive? And then the downfield blocking. That one was beautiful. Grayson, five wide again. We'll go to the air. This play worked well last time. It's going to work well this time. And... Oh, same result where we get find Dion Fountain for an easy gain, but man, he's taken some really hard hits at this point. That one got us inside the 10 as we'll hand it off on this second down. And CJ's going to lose. Now he gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to end our first quarter. And at the end of one, all tied up. It looks like we could score. I don't want to settle for a field goal, though, so I'm looking for the end zone. And I'm hoping that we can get it on this third down. Kind of looking for C.J. Beasley on the play. Outside the pocket, Beasley's open, and he dropped it. Hit him in the hands, and he couldn't hold on. Can't even say it was the defense that caused it. So fourth and five will go for it again. They're bringing some pressure up the middle. A lot of space for Grayson. He's got the touchdown easy. They just forgot that he can run. And Grayson having a pretty solid game, minus one pass. He finds the end zone. We retake the lead to start the second quarter. And how about this? North Carolina loses their third in a row. They fall to a now 5-0 Miami. That's pretty rough for the Tar Heels. I love it. Seems like they've lost all of their production now that Sam Howell isn't there. <laughs> they start the season 1-3 after the year that they had last time out. That's pretty rough. Oh, you know what else is rough? What the heck is Logan Malden? We got Sonic on the team. Logan Malden just came out of nowhere. It looked like it was going to be a touchdown, but... Uh, I guess special teams get some sort of power up. Well, Texas A&M scored in two plays the last time they had the ball. Uh, anything less than that or any, any more plays than that would be good news. We didn't give up a first down the first time out. Still eight yards. 
A little bit worried, but that this is going to be one of those games where we just get slaughtered as this is a run up the middle. The Blitz can't quite get there, and they get the first down. He just happened to fall perfectly. And I'm just going to keep bringing the pressure. Why not bring the Blitz? Kale Mackey with the strip sack. Taylor gets it, and we get the ball on the turnover. Oh, my goodness. Is this actually a strip sack? I don't think he was down. Yeah, that's clean. Kale Mackey with the massive defensive play as we brought the Blitz. And it works out in our favor. A chance to extend our lead. Both us and Texas A&M came into this game with a minus three turnover differential on the season. Seems like we're on the winning side of that battle so far today as CJ Beasley on first down gets a huge gap and picks up nine yards. We're going to go with the fake uh, sweep once again. It worked well for us last time. Beasley, great carry, has the first down and a big chunk more. So our offense is cooking here. We knew coming into this game that uh, Texas A&M didn't have a great defense, but we're kind of cooking them right now. Easy throw to Jackson, and Marquise doesn't get a whole lot of playing time where we actually throw to him, but does a great job that time. Typically, it kind of feels like we only use him for special teams, but he's going to definitely grow into something that looks like they want to bring pressure. We're going to continue to run on second and one and hope that CJ can make a spin move and somehow find his way through the line for six more yards. This has been phenomenal offensively so far this game. Grayson on the play action rolling outside the pocket. Frees him, uh, his space up. Ran for it. Probably should have slid, but second and one inside the five. We'll take it. They honestly covered that surprisingly well as we are going to go halfback dive, not fullback dive. Second and one. From the two, and Beasley maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. They say it's third and one. We'll hope for the best here. It's just kind of been a battle between uh, both of these squads, the, the offensive line and the defensive line, in these short yardage spots. We're going to go fullback dive, and J.J. Barr, wow, falling forward. Can't get the first down. It's fourth and inches. We're going to go right back to him. I legitimately think that a QB sneak is guaranteed points. But we're going to give it to JJ anyways, and the dive works. The touchdown is there. Oh, we got to we gotta use this man because he's having a great game so far, and it's now 21-7 to midway through the second quarter. Oh, my goodness. Ole Miss upsets number one Oregon. 53-51, and Oregon State upsets number six Arizona State. So uh, how could we not get ranked? We got a great record compared to some of these teams now. As an Oregonian, I got to tell you, there would be pandemonium in the state if number one Oregon lost and Oregon State upset a top 10 team in the same week at the same time. Our defense came away with the strip sack the last time out. I would love another turnover. I won't expect it. I just want to slow these guys down. And we'll try to get that with uh, the Blitz. The Blitz has been our bread and butter on some of these games. This time, a run to the outside. He might be gone. He's already had one big one. Charles Steele has his tackle broken. So did Miles Baker. The Cavalry arrived and knocked him out of bounds. And man, these guys are just dominating us. There's a sack. It seems that our offensive line has no pass protection, but can run block really well. So if we bring pressure and they step back to pass under the center, maybe we have a chance to just destroy them every time. One thing's certain, though, I'm going to continue to blitz as much as is humanly possible. Charles Steele, great play recognition. Gets us into a third down here. And we'll just try to defend this one. Third and nine, hoping for the best. Diggs. Oh, no, I got beat over the middle. Oh, but the quarterback misses on only a second pass attempt. I was expecting the out route. I was expecting the corner route. And he goes across me and the uh, quarterback just missed. No excuse there, as they're going to punt this one, try to coffin corner us. Not the best punt, not the worst. We got a minute and 38 in all our timeouts to try to make this a three-score lead heading into the half. So we're not going to go too far away from the offense that's gotten us to this point yet. We're still going to run the ball. Can't be scared to do that is Beasley. Oh, if he picks up a block there, he's gone. Still got the first down, which means it'll stop the clock. And we'll go with a play action sweep on this first down. Grayson over the middle. Tough throw, but Tyson Mobley wide open. The safety stopped covering him, and he gets free for 22. Just got to keep passing the ball here. See if we can find guys. Maybe Marquise Jackson over the middle. Trying to sit in the pocket. A is wide open. Logan Malden comes down. No, he drops it. 
Usually sure hands, but can't hold on that time. It was a great play by the safety to disrupt that one and cause the incompletion, so... Unable to keep moving the ball. Oh no, throwing off our back foot. Bounces off of alignment. Thankfully, it's the ground, but it's third and ten. We don't need it at all on this play, but we do need something, so we'll hope for the best here. As we'll step back to pass, and I'm throwing it deep. Marquise could be wide open. Jackson finally has a big play as he's down the field for a 55-yard touchdown reception. I've been waiting for one of those all season long. It finally happens. Only one safety, and they played a little bit too far up, so he burns his coverage and finds the end zone. My only worry is that uh, maybe we've left them way too much time on the clock. A minute and eight. All of their timeouts. I know they're going to be going to the air, so hopefully their quarterback isn't that good. Man, they have a very good uh, return team. They're getting good returns all day long. They don't have to worry too much about the clock, though, so we're not going to necessarily send a bunch of deep safeties. We're going to try to play our uh, defense and hope that stuff like that happens. We'll take it, force them to take the timeout under a minute left. Second and six. They'll step back to pass here, I imagine. Can't see them going away from it. They're looking for it. Quarterback scrambling. Can we get there with Cade? Or Kale. Sorry, Cade. Sorry, sorry, Kale. <laughs> Mackey gets the tackle. It's third and two. And now that I know the quarterback's willing to run, we should be prepared for it. They're throwing it deep. A man open. Stokes gets the interception, though. In 37 seconds in all our timeouts, I'm looking to score again. Manny Stokes making an awesome play on the underthrown ball. And now we're going to see, can we get something? Throwing it deep for Marquise Jackson. Oh, just out of his reach as he catches that on the run. It's another touchdown. If we could even get a field goal on this, I would be ecstatic. Plenty of time to work with. Can't panic too much too early. Over the middle, hoping for the best. There's Marquise again. Maybe a breakout game for him, a first down. We'll go in the hurry up. And again, they're not playing safeties deep on us. I got to send our boys deep on some of these plays. Bed good, maybe a pick. Oh, just couldn't use him into the right position. Oh, they're getting a little bit of a return as well. He's got a convoy in front of him. With 16 seconds, I might have just allowed them to get into field goal range. That was a bad, bad pass from me. Just a shame. What can we do to hold them here? 16 seconds on the clock. They will step back to pass. Guys, you've got to be open. And Shelton got burned. So did Diggs. That's a shame. They take the timeout with 10 seconds. We got to hope that they have bad time management and we don't give up a field goal. Absolutely going to stick with the coverage that we've had so far. Hope that they screw this one up as over the middle. They're going to take the timeout and that's going to be it. Maybe a chance at a kick return for us though. So five seconds on the clock. They're down 21. This would make it uh, still a three score game, but a little bit more manageable as we can't block the kick. Two seconds on the clock, 28 to 10. I would love it if we could return this kick. Marquise has had a pretty good game so far but hasn't really been on special teams where I expected to come from. We need great blocking to open this one up, and that's not even close to what we need. So we will go into the half up 18. Man, it could have been up 28. Kind of screwed it up, but I can't be upset with that. We really show up to play against these 99 overall teams, though. That's for sure. Uh, we're winning the turnover battle. Threw a bad pick at the end of the half there, but, you know, that's where you're going to throw your bad picks. So let's just hope that the defense can come out here to start the third and really continue this momentum. Frederick kicking into the wind this time out. Doesn't get it really far. This is fielded at the five and their special teams has been pretty solid all game long. Oh my gosh, very solid. They're across the 35 on a 33 yard return. The goal here is just to not give up uh, anything massive. We don't want to let them, you know, get rid of this lead. Good tackle from Shelton. Anything to keep this clock moving right now, I'm going to be all for it. We're going to go safety blitz on this second and five as they step back to pass. And the pressure couldn't get there. Roger Reed got slaughtered. And Cam Brown gets the 13-yard reception. All right, first down again. Stepping back to pass. Guys, open. No, he stepped out of bounds. That's a flag. We get the penalty. Oh, it's a shame we didn't get that. That seemed like an easy pick for Reed. But it's an illegal touching. And I think that's uh yeah, five-yard penalty and a loss of a down. So second and fifteen now. 
A step back to pass over the middle. They have a guy. They got the penalty yardage and a little bit more, but it's now third and six and a chance for a stop for this defense. Just can't give up anything major on this one. We know they'll go to the air. Maybe it's a play action. Guys open. Oh my gosh. Aaron Diggs has been getting just eaten alive today. That man's still not out of bounds. Oh, Alan Whitehead goes for 29 to get inside the red zone. All we really need to do on defense at this point is just slow them down, which we're not doing a great job of. Run towards the edge. Shelton gets him. Anything to keep the clock moving is good for our offense. They're running back now at eight carries for like over 100 yards. This is a little bit absurd. Kind of expecting them to go to the air. It's an option. They pitch it out. Killen was there and he gets the tackle. Gave up less than a full yard. So we've got a third and four. I'm going to try to make sure that we continue to contain the quarterback. They're stepping back to pass it. Steele drops the interception. Oh my gosh, it would have been huge, but we're going to hold them to a field goal here. I am more than fine with this. It'll make it, uh, what, a 15-point game if they manage to hit it. No fake, no block. It's good. 28-13, and we get the ball back. And, you know, after uh, the way the half ended, I'm more than happy with this. Let's just go ahead and see what we can get on offense. Uh, ooh, not a very returnable kick with Jackson. I'm going to bring it out anyways. The dude's had a pretty solid game. The blocking has been pretty solid, and somehow he turns that into a 46-yard return just shy of the 40-yard line. So we have made some pretty risky decisions today, and so far they've worked out beautifully as our offense and special teams are just really getting it done. Eight-yard carry that time for C.J. Beasley gives him 57 on the day. A touchdown here would be terrible news if you're a Texas A&M fan because this offense has been doing so, so good. I'll expect Dion Fountain to be open here. Our A receiver, he's been open on this play all day, and he's open again. Can't make that safety miss, so he gets hit by him again, but he gets us another first down. We're going to try the fake fly again on this one. I'm not sure it'll work all that well. The blocking needs to be good. The blocking's nowhere near where it needs to be. And Beasley broke a tackle. Actually got a yard out of the play. It was all pure effort, though. So second and nine. Let's step back to pass. Try to make sure that we're safe throwing the ball. A is open. Give it to DJ Johnson. Can't break the tackle, but he gets positive yards, and it's a more manageable third down now. I don't believe that we're in field goal range. The wind is coming five miles an hour into our face. So this is four down territory. Hopefully we don't need fourth down. Is Beasley a great carry on third and five? Can't pick up that extra block from, I think that's bed good, but just a lot of space gets us back inside the red zone. And oh my gosh, how about the downfield blocking so far this game for us? Well, let's keep running the ball here. They're bringing pressure, but we're going up the middle away from the edges where they bring it. Braden Bennett carries it again he's not getting a whole lot of carries but he's doing a good job second one now averaging six and a half on the two Braden's gonna go ahead and stay in on this one as we go second and five from just outside the 10 and tough throw oh my gosh Grayson missed by a mile we're lucky as he threw that into three Aggie players that we still have the ball all right now all righty no guarantee this play works especially with the pressure but we're running the tackle zone play that I created and well Beasley <laughs> I don't think it was because of my play design but it works out and he gets eight yards and a first and goal we're still pretty far out to be doing this but from the three it's fullback dive time JJ Barr up the middle oh my gosh got two of the three and he's on the doorstep at this point if you're Texas A&M and I mean, you think we're gonna do anything else you're foolish fullback dive Got to go two in a row, and from the goal line, J.J. Barr gets his third rushing touchdown of the day on only, I think, six carries. So really a great game for him. It's 35-13, and we've now extended the lead a little bit more. 22 points in our favor, and man, their special teams just continue to be pretty solid compared to what we're used to seeing, but we're almost in the fourth quarter, up three scores. I'm feeling real confident now. We're going to take a risk here and bring the corner blitz on first and 10. And it's a handoff up the middle. That's not great news for us. Gave up the first down as a result. Uh, bit of a shame, but, you know, it's not always going to work. I'm expecting these guys to start passing a ton, but we're not quite there yet, I guess. As, oh, no. I don't know if that was my man or not, but Braylon Smith was wide open. We're lucky that was only 18 yards. 
Let's try to bring the blitz on this first down. They're going to hand it off out towards the edge. Mackey gets there. We're lucky he ran into his man, only gave up three. And I'm just going to trust the man coverage this time out. This is a little play action. Over the middle, they found a man. He grabbed it while diving, took a hit, held onto it, and got it to a third and three. Man, they're really, really utilizing this hurry up as they will go for it here. I'm expecting a pass. Could be a run. They do have a fullback in formation. And no, we're going to let this go into the fourth quarter. Honestly, best case scenario. Gives our chance, uh, our defense a chance to breathe. But heading into the fourth, up 22, I feel supremely confident that we get this win against a 99 overall Texas A&M. They're going to come out looking like maybe they could run this. I'm a little bit worried they will hand it off. No draw over the middle. Saw it a little bit too late. Can't get there, and Dillard Knight hauls it in. They do move the chains to start this fourth quarter. And it's time for us to start blitzing a lot more. We haven't quite done it so far on this drive. We'll see if we can get back to it. The safety blitz forces the quarterback to throw it away immediately. And that's what I love to see. All right, we're bringing a blitz again. Second and 10. It worked last time. They're going to run it up the middle. That's where a blitz is coming. He broke the tackle, but Charles Steele eventually brings him down. And it's third and long for this Tamu team. So let's see what we can do to try to slow these guys down. Wouldn't be surprised. We haven't seen any screens so far this game. No, they're going to run the draw. And he hurtled immediately, losing a ton of speed. Uh, Devin did not enough there. It's worth an eight. So it's almost obvious, but they have to go for this. Down so much so late in the game, and kind of left my man open. Quarterback gets sacked. It's a turnover on down. I think that's Durham Finch getting in there. Just kind of bam. What is he doing? Bamboozled this man. He was on the uh, contain and said, nah, I'm going to go get this guy if you don't mind, coach. So the 12th man, not enough today. Texas A&M maybe needed another one. Maybe you should have gone for 13 as uh, we're just going to, I guess, see Grayson run that broken play that I forget is broken. And we'll start to burn the clock here in the fourth quarter. Back spasms for the quarterback of Texas A&M after the sack that ended any chances that they would have had in the comeback. And now we can get this one down into the final minutes of the game. And we'll take a little bit of a risk here passing on third down, trying to get that uh, first down. Keep the clock moving, and there's Malden, and there's the first down. So Texas A&M is going to have to take their timeouts real soon if they want any chance, but maybe they've given up. Grayson had a pretty solid game aside from the bad interception at the end of the half. Uh, our running game has been phenomenal against what was supposed to be the better part of their defense. And we'll continue to run it to Beasley, second and seven. Doesn't get much. It is another third down to try to convert here. At this point, I'm not too worried about it, though. This could be a mistake. We're going to go with the motion swing screen, which is a little bit risky, but Logan Malden is open. Spin move can't get his man. We get back to the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth down. And we'll go ahead and punt this ball away. Uh, I mean, they're going to have a minute and 10 down three scores. I think that we've done the job. Let's see how this punt does. That's pretty solid if it bounces. It does hit the ground. Oh, my gosh, it hit the pylon. What an amazing punt. Oh, they called it a touchback. They said that it was into the end zone hitting the pylon, so the wrong part of the pylon. We got to look at that. How close to this pylon does it get? Just an inch more to the left here, and we were good. And I don't know, man. I know that the pylon is technically, you know, the goal line, but it hits the outside. That is so unfortunate. Almost as perfect of a punt as we could have hoped for. So they should just be, uh, you know, I mean, they're still going to go for it, but we're not too worried. Tackles inside the first down marker and inbounds are going to be great. I think this is actually the backup quarterback as they will continue to pass. And we need to make sure we get our tackles in, but uh, I mean, I'm not sure I agree with this hurry up when you're down so much. I understand having pride in your game and not wanting to get beat at your uh, home stadium, but you can't uh, you can't risk injuring your starters uh, in a game that you've lost so early in the season. Not only that, Texas A&M now taking their timeouts. They only have one left, thankfully, but uh, need to make sure we get our tackles, and that'll start burning the clock quite a bit more. We'll see how the coverage will be. 
Just wasting our time here. They're running the ball as well. That went a loss of four. It's third and 13. Diggs with a great tackle in open space. And with 20 seconds left here, I mean, they, we could be running a couple more plays, but great chance to get off the field as they will throw it short of the line to gain. And this man just broke two tackles and he's going to convert it. Wow. That's a little disappointing. That could have been the end of it all. Well, nine seconds left now. Well, we've got the win. At least we can already start celebrating that. Uh, that's going to do it. No, they took a timeout there. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Kind of expecting to see a Hail Mary, although they're not really lined up for it. So I guess they're just going to continue to run their offense. Man comes in motion. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed here. Final play of the game. It's a handoff up the middle. And uh, well, the clock will stop, but I don't think they have time to do anything. Maybe spiking the ball, but... Don't expect this to go well. <laughs> Maybe we need to defend one more. They will be able to know. Okay. I was totally expecting them to just continue to go. How rude of Texas A&M. This always happens against the teams that we play. Uh, a little bit frustrating. But we slaughtered 99 overall Texas A&M. Ranked in the top 25. We're going to boot them right out of there. And move to what? 4-1. 5-1 on the season. It's been a great start to the year. We saw a bunch of upsets in front of us. Um, a lot of top 10 teams losing this week, and hopefully that's enough to get us ranked, and that should be great for some of our recruiting uh, goals and picking up points as well. So how about that for a complete game for us? They technically outpassed us 181 yards to our 176, but we outrushed them. Uh, we had the time of possession victory by a mile. We beat them in the turnover battle and how about our second quarter 21 points in the second quarter alone is phenomenal didn't need to score in the fourth because we had it done before them and uh those two drives where we held them to field goals in the second and third i mean we just dominated a 99 overall team that's a very hard thing to do we got it done jj Barr is our offensive player of the game with three fullback dives for touchdowns and kale mackey had the sack and the forced fumble to get the defensive player of the game honors. Uh, you'll love to see it. So we uh, we earn another 5-1 on the season. Almost bowl eligible six weeks into this one. Uh, we have a bye week coming up eventually, right? Oh my gosh, we go week 11 before our first bye? That's pretty rough. Anyways, on the road at Virginia Tech for week 7. Will we be ranked heading into that game? All righty. Well, Andre Atkins has committed to Kentucky. That's a shame. We were hoping for some sort of magic there. We get locked out by Rashawn McBride and Brian Mason. Uh, Ron Winston's going to Arizona, but a bunch of guys are ready to visit. So uh, weird recruiting stuff. We're going to have to do some midseason figuring out of <laughs> who belongs on our board. We aren't ranked. Oh, my gosh. On the road to play one in three Virginia Tech, and we aren't ranked. How? Top 25 polls, we saw losses. Three Oklahoma and one Oregon, as well as what? Number six, uh, Arizona State. Number seven, Michigan. All taking L's. Uh, Illinois took a loss. Ohio State did. And USC, TCU, Clemson, Texas A&M, and North Carolina all dropped out. We're still only 27th behind that Notre Dame team that we beat. So, very frustrating. How about the media poll? I expect us to be ranked here. We were 27th last week. With all the chaos, we are ranked 23rd. What a discrepancy there between the two, but we finally get up there. So, thank goodness for the media poll. That's, I mean, obviously my favorite. It always has been. <laughs> and uh, I don't expect to see us up here at all during the season, but we'll take a look at the Heisman watch list. Kendall Milton, the running back from Georgia, leads it with Chris Street, the Cal running back. They just uh, beat UCLA last week. Uh, Shane Illingsworth from Oklahoma State has dropped down. Cameron Davis from Washington, a running back. And the Vanderbilt quarterback, Ken Seals. What a great name. <laughs> but an interesting batch of guys. Anybody 99 overall? No, the 96 overall is the highest. That's uh, not something that we usually see. Typically, these guys are all super high at overalls, but maybe a little bit more realistic for us this time around. Shame uh, we didn't have anybody else to contend this year. So our championship contender at a B plus right now, and our conference prestige still at a B. This is a shame. The ACC looking real bad. Look at that average rank, 23.7. That's miles off. SEC, 8.7 for the average rank. Oh, man. Yeah. 
that is uh, a little too realistic and it, it hurts me quite a bit. Big 10, Big 12, and the Pac-12 all right there. They're going to be shuffling around, but we need our conference to go up. And uh, right now we're just cannibalizing. So that'll certainly hurt our recruiting, but our focus is just on us winning at this point. Uh, I mean, if we can get into the playoffs this year, that'll help no matter what. We are the better team against Virginia Tech. They're minus eight on the turnover differential through four games. We're only minus two now, so maybe we can get some turnovers, but beautiful little preview as to what should be a good one. And I expect us to do well, especially after coming out of that, that big one, although we are on the road and things can get a little bit wonky when you're not at home. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you're not subscribed and you want to know when new videos get posted, please feel free to go down there and hit the red button. Turn it gray it means a lot to me and it helps out the channel a ton. And while you're down there, feel free to head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter and our community discord. And of course, a link to get the college football revamped mod if you're wanting it for yourself. That being said, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later. Adios.